Hats off to all you dancing yes. queens out there. Uh, International Women's Day Ooh, here today. Yes, it so, is. Woo woo to all you women. <laughs> there we go. Woo woo is woo, right. Woo. Celebrate your uh, favorite ladies today and all the women out there. You know, as we said earlier, go ahead. Adjust your crown That's and right. work it. <laughs> there you whether, go. whether you actually have the crown on or not, it's there. <laughs> Put it on today. You exactly. Can. <laughs> yeah, but thanks for joining us here. It is 6 a.m. I'm not at your on part. I'm Eric Connor. Let's check in with Evan and see uh, how things are starting off here on our Tuesday. Got to crank up Flawless by Beyonce as you oh, step yeah, out the door, sure. right? I woke yeah. up like this. How about that kind of energy? <laughs> Good morning to you. We are starting off the day with a beautiful sunrise. No clouds out there. Offshore flow keeps the clouds at bay. And as we head toward the afternoon, we're going to warm up nicely. However, we're off to a cold start to the morning, mainly upper 30s and low 40s out there over the next 45 minutes or so. We'll start that warm up by the time we get to the afternoon. We're looking at upper 60s and low 70s sunshine across the board, but it won't last for too long. We've got a pretty decent storm system coming our way. Not going to bring us here in San Diego all that much in terms of shower activity, but we'll walk through that in just a minute. As far as traffic goes, crashes have been cleared this morning. We saw one on the 163 that's been cleared and one on the 15. So getting a tow truck on scene where it meets the 76. But besides that, smooth sailing this morning. Evan, thank you so much. And here we are, a new day, another record for gas prices. So now we are at $5.48 mm. a gallon. A year ago, this is what we were paying, three seventy nine. dollars Boy, that's a big difference. Yeah. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live in Kearney Mason now. And a lot of people looking at electric vehicles now because of the prices we just showed everyone. Yes, good morning, Eric and Netta. The sticker price and shock continues as people fill up their gas tank. Some people are thinking, what are other ways I can use to get to work, get to see family and friends? Some people are buying electric bikes. Those are pretty pricey, as well as electric vehicles. We spoke to a couple local dealerships who are saying that it's tough to get inventory. The demand is just, um, it's really through the roof. Um, I've been in the business quite a long time, but I've never seen anything like it. Now that was Dave McCracken with Kearney Mesa Hyundai, who says they don't have a single electric car on their lot because their waiting list to get a car and order one is extremely long. Audi of San Diego says they have dozens of deposits with some people waiting more than two months for their electric car. Experts say it is hard to know just how high prices will go or how long they'll stay so expensive. But what they do know is if you're thinking about buying an electric car, make that decision sooner rather than later. Looks like you have to plan a couple of months ahead. Now, gas is 62 cents more than it was a week ago, 79 cents higher than just a month ago. Some tips for you if you're looking to save. Independent owned gas stations sometimes are cheaper. Also, pay with cash. You could save about 10 cents per gallon at most places. Think about joining a rewards program linked to your grocery shopping. You could save 20 cents per gallon. And if your car allows it, local experts say you can get more bang for your buck by getting premium gas instead of regular gas. This can add a few more miles extra per gallon. Now, uh, yesterday it was 10 cents cheaper than it was today. Three, five dollars and 48 cents a gallon. It's tough to see, but if you're looking for the cheapest in San Diego, you can head to CBS8.com. Click the help button. You have a resource there to check out those prices around our area. Anything can help. A couple of cents, I know, really does make a difference for some of us out there. Live in Kearney Mesa, I'm Dana Marie McNichol. I'll send it back to you. And those gas prices could skyrocket even higher. We have just learned President Biden is expected to ban Russia oil imports in retaliation for the invasion of Ukraine. That's according to the Associated Press. He also this morning is saying Ukraine is accusing Russia of violating an agreement to let civilians flee the city of Mariupol along a humanitarian corridor. With more Ukrainian towns and cities coming under siege here, leaders are trying to establish corridors to let civilians safely escape without fear of an attack. However, as the war rages on, Ukrainian are still standing strong. Take a look at this. Powerful footage of a Ukrainian girl singing Frozen's Let It Go from a bomb shelter. This is making waves along the internet here. The girl's name is Amelia, and the video has grabbed the attention of Adina Menzel, who sang the hit song in the animated film. Menzel retweeted Amelia's version, saying, quote, we see you.
And now this morning, we officially have a new superintendent at San Diego Unified. Dr. Lamont Jackson will now lead the state's second largest school district. And CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live outside district headquarters with a closer look at this year long nationwide search. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. This was a nationwide search. It came down to two candidates, but ultimately it was Dr. Lamont Jackson who won the board's favor and is now going to be taking on this new role. But it's a role that he's been in as interim superintendent ever since Cindy Martin left for D.C. In fact, remember, Martin left the district to go to go be Biden's by the Biden administration's deputy secretary of education. But again, Dr. Jackson, no stranger to this district, not just because the interim superintendent job that he had, but he grew up here. He also went to San Diego Unified Schools and began his career in the district as a teaching assistant. He's held a variety of other roles as well, too. He's been a teacher, coach, principal, human resources chief, and an area superintendent. It was a long process to find Martin's successor, though. There were interviews, engagement forums with the community, and student focus groups. Ultimately, it was between Dr. Jackson and Dr. Susan Enfield, superintendent of Highline Public Schools in Washington State, but it was Dr. Jackson that was unanimously approved by the board to lead this district moving forward. This is not about one person. This is not about the superintendent. This is about us as a collective group. I look forward to working with our entire community to lead the San Diego Unified out of this pandemic with a focus on learning and teaching. That is that is our foundation. And this is going to take hard work. But as a good friend of mine says, uh, Tim Farson, this is hard work. And Dr. Jackson's contract will be ratified on March 22nd. That's when it becomes public. That's when we have a clearer picture of exactly what the salary will be for this position as Dr. Jackson fills it. Now, we will be hearing from Dr. Jackson coming up on the CW San Diego, just coming up here at seven o'clock at the seven o'clock hour. Back to you. Yeah, certainly looking forward to chatting with him. All right, Chris, thanks for that. Well, Scripps Health now says patients' personal and health information may have been stolen during last spring's cybersecurity breach. The hospital system is sending out these letters here to patients. I received one. It also said my medical record, patient account, and clinical information, including diagnosis and treatment information, may have been accessed. Scripps is urging those affected to look at statements from healthcare providers for any services they didn't receive. As of right now, Scripps doesn't believe any patient information has been used to commit fraud. Our request to interview the CEO regarding the breach was denied, but in a statement, a Scripps spokesperson says, quote, we sincerely regret the concern this has caused our patients and community. Governor Gavin Newsom will deliver his State of the State address. That's happening today. This comes as California grapples with issues ranging from a housing crisis to these record high gas prices and the ongoing COVID pandemic. The governor's annual speech takes place just six months after he survived a recall election and as he prepares for another election this year. Take a look outside here. We are expecting a sunny day, right? A sunny day for today, but changes that will arrive pretty quickly. That's what we call a tease there. Uh, we're going to be talking about the next chance for some wet weather in the forecast going from Wednesday into Thursday. But for today, yes, plenty of sunshine across the board. The view outside from PB, gorgeous. And take a look. The reason why is because of those offshore winds. So that's preventing any clouds from developing along the greater coastline. Instead, we wake up to a beautiful view of that sunrise. We've got gusts in the double digits off toward most of your mountain ranges. Julie and right now at 25 mile per hour gusts alpine at 34 winds are going to calm down but we still have those weak santa anas uh, taking place for today now let's take a look at one of the other views that we have this one from mount woodson you can see just how vivid those orange colors are as we kick off the morning temperatures in downtown san diego in the mid 40s 44 is what we're seeing calm winds uh, off toward the coastline however the mountains toward your inland valleys is where we're seeing a little bit of trouble as we head through the day next 12 hours of course we're starting off cold but we're going to make our way to the low 60s by the time we get to 10 a.m. Upper 60s into 2 p.m. Sunshine across the board. Clouds that will start to develop into tomorrow night. So let's walk through how this is going to take place, right? We've got right now this ridge of high pressure overhead that's keeping us dry. This nearby trough is going to just kind of nudge that off to the west, and we're going to see this low pressure system sink in. And as it does so, it's going to bring along some showers. So that's mainly going to take place over the mountaintops on early Thursday morning as well as Thursday afternoon. However, it does still show a chance that some of our 
inland valleys, for example, and even the coastline could get a little bit of a sprinkle. Following that, ridge of high pressure takes place once again, and that's going to uh, bring our temperatures back up to the 70s, bring more sunshine to the forecast, and help us out quite a bit in that sense. So in turn, that 10 day temperature trend shows that we're going to cool down for the next couple days. And then once that ridge is overhead, we'll start to see those temperatures warm up and more sunshine in the mix. Right now, traffic has been very, very light on the roads. I just want to take you to about North County. That's really where we're running into the most amount of trouble. So we're stopping first off on the 76. There's a crash at Camino Del Rey. We're still checking out this left hand shoulder. They're working to get that tow truck on scene, but you can see some slower speeds on the southbound lanes of the 15 as it meets the 76 left hand shoulder blocked and number one lane blocked with a stalled vehicle that again they are working to clear as we speak.